Good Thursday, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversation Daily News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Well, we made it over the hump, and we're in the home stretch towards the weekend, and we made it to the last day of March. Can you believe it? It is March 31st, and what a month this has been, right? I hope you guys have had a great one. I know it's been a lot of things happening, but we're glad you all could be with us here at Conversations Daily News for today's program. But, of course, you have your news headlines coming up. We have the truth of the day with Mary Ellen Saganovich. And in today's Entertainment Spotlight, you've been part of my conversation with actor and author Sean Kanan. You guys probably follow him here on Instagram discussing his new book, Way of the Cobra. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Thursday headlines. In national news, White House says intel shows Putin misled by advisors on Ukraine. The U.S. intelligence officials have determined that Russian President Vladimir Putin is being misinformed by advisors about his military's poor performance in Ukraine, according to the White House. The advisors are scared to tell him the truth, the intel says. The findings recently declassified indicate that Putin is aware of the situation on information coming to him, and there now is persistent tension between him and senior Russian military advisors. The U.S. believes Putin is being misled not only about his military's performance, but also how the Russian economy economy is being crippled by sanctions because, again, his senior advisors are too afraid to tell him the truth. Earlier, President Joe Biden said in an exchange with reporters that he could not comment on the intelligence. The administration is hopeful that divulging the finding could help pride Putin to reconsider his options in Ukraine, according to a U.S. official. The official was not authorized to comment and spoke on the condition of anonymity. The war has ground to a bloody stalemate in much of the country, with heavy casualties and Russian troop morale sinking as Ukrainian forces and volunteers put up an unexpectedly stout fight. But the publicity could also risk further isolating Putin, who U.S. officials have said seems at least in part driven by a desire to win back Russian prestige lost by the fall of the Soviet Union. Meanwhile, Biden told the Ukrainian President Zelensky during a 55-minute call that an additional $500 million in direct aid for Ukraine was on its way. It's the latest burst in American assistance as the Russian invasion grinds on. Asked about the latest intelligence, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken suggested that a dynamic within the Kremlin exists where advisors are unwilling to speak to Putin with candor. The intelligence community has concluded that Putin was unaware that his military had been using and losing conscripts in Ukraine. They also have determined he is not fully aware of the extent to which the Russian economy is being damaged by the economic sanctions imposed by the U.S. and its allies. In more national news, with at least one GOP vote, Jackson likely to be confirmed. Maine Senator Susan Collins said Wednesday she will vote to confirm Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, giving Democrats at least one Republican vote, and all but assuring that Jackson will become the first black woman on the Supreme Court. Collins met with Jackson a second time this week after four days of hearings last week and said Wednesday that she possesses the experience, qualifications, and integrity to serve as an associate judge on the Supreme Court. I will therefore vote to confirm her to this position, Collins said. Collins' support gives Democrats at least a one-vote cushion in the 50-50 Senate and likely saves them from having to use Vice President Kamala Harris' tie-breaking vote to confirm President Joe Biden's pick. Senate Democratic leaders are pushing toward a Senate Judiciary Committee vote on the nomination Monday and a final Senate vote to confirm Jackson late next week. In more national news, U.S. astronaut ends record space flight with Russian ride home. A NASA astronaut caught a Russian ride back to Earth on Wednesday after U.S. record 355 days at the International Space Station, returning with two cosmonauts to a war torn apart by war. Despite escalating tensions between the U.S. and Russia over Vladimir Putin's war with Ukraine, the astronaut followed customary procedures. A small NASA team of doctors and other staff was on hand for the touchdown and planned to return immediately to Houston with the 55-year-old astronaut. In more national news, Bruce Willis, diagnosed with aphasia, steps away from acting. Bruce Willis is stepping away from acting after a diagnosis of aphasia, a condition that causes loss of the ability to understand or express speech, his family said on Wednesday. In a statement posted on Willis's Instagram page, the 67-year-old actor's family announced that Willis was recently diagnosed with aphasia and that it is impacting his cognitive abilities. As a result of this, and with much consideration, Bruce is stepping away from the career that has meant so much to him read the statement signed by Willis's wife, his ex-wife Demi Moore, 
and his five children. We are moving through this as a strong family unit and wanted to bring his fans in because we know how much he means to you as you do to him, they said. As Bruce always says, live it up, and today we plan to do just that. And finally, in business news, stocks fall, breaking a four-day winning streak on Wall Street. Technology companies let stocks lower on Wall Street Wednesday, ending a four-day winning streak for the market after an economic report stoked worries about the health of the economy. The S&P 500 fell 0.6% after having been down nearly 1.1% at one point. The Dow Jones Industrial Average slipped 0.2%, making it nearly all the way back from a 0.7% loss. The pullback was the index's first lower close in five days. The tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite fell 1.2%. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Tegeneres. Mary Ellen, take it away. Hi, this is Mary Ellen with your Truth of the Day. Focus on the positive nature of the people in your life. At times, you may discount the people in your life that fail to meet your expectations. A change in your attitude can help you to see the positive potential in all people. Looking for and distinguishing other people's positive traits enables you to turn disappointments into blessings. It takes awareness, and it takes a lot of hard work to see yourself differently. You must become aware of the expectations you have towards others. You have been taught since birth to have expectations, motives, and judgments about anyone in any situation. As you become aware of them and change your attitude, you are able to see people and situations differently. Today, recognize the people you love as the individuals they are and see your circumstances as changeable. Go about and enjoy the day. We are part of my conversation coming up with actor and author Sean Kanan in today's Entertainment Spotlight. Stay with us. You're listening to Conversation Daily News. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. Actor and author Sean Kanan rejoined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about his brand new book, Way of the Cobra, and what he hopes it does for you. Here's a bit of our conversation. Sean, thank you so much for the time. I really do appreciate it. Cyrus, it is always great to be back with you, and I want to say hi to all your listeners in Mississippi. I uh, I had the good fortune of coming to Mississippi a couple of times, and just the nicest people in the world. Well, thank you. We appreciate that, Sean. Well, Sean, man, you are one of the nicest people, uh, for sure. You know, you and I have been having these conversations over the years, and I always yeah. appreciate, for one, uh, your your time, uh, but also, I think, the insight. And that's the, that's the great thing about you, Sean. As I said, people know you as an actor, but you have really shown that you are so much more than an actor. What has that been like for you through these books, especially Way of the Cobra, to be able to show how you really are at your heart a teacher as well? You know, it's funny. I always thought that I got into acting because I wanted to express myself. You know, I was looking for uh, a way to, uh, you know, uh, impact the world. And I love to entertain people. And as I've gotten older, I've realized that the core reason why I got into acting was because I want to inspire people. And as I've gotten a little further down the road, I've come to realize that acting is only one conduit with which I can do that. And my, my desire, my hope is that in addition to my acting, that now I can inspire people with my writing. This is my third book, which is also far and away my most personal book. And, um, you know, I've been, I've been getting an amazing response from people who have been telling me that they've been able to make some really significant positive changes in their life. And that just makes me beyond happy. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in into this edition of Conversation Daily News. But we have to get on tomorrow to wrap up this week. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. And as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversation Daily News today. Let's make today amazing. Take care.